The title of my message this morning is Pay Attention to the Examples. Pay Attention to the Examples. And if you want to go ahead and fill out the outline, my points are the counsel, the choice, the consequence. The counsel, the choice, the consequence. Graduates, did you ever have a teacher tell you, pay attention to the examples? That's something that I tell my students all the time. I'm an Algebra 2 teacher at Spyro. And I have students come in the classroom. What are we doing today, Mr. Darnell? Oh, we're going to multiply matrices. We're going to talk about the quadratic formula. Cindy, I'll even sing to them. Although it's not good, it brings good humor. I was like, X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B to the second minus 4AC all over 2A. And you know the reaction? Man, they are just thrilled to death to be there. They're excited. They're like, whoo, whoo, quadratic formula. Yeah, you know that's not right, huh? You know. No, it's more like this. Ugh. Hand if you make a comment. When am I ever going to use this in the real world? Yeah, a lot of you use that, huh? They, and they'll say something like, my mom and dad probably never multiplied matrices. They probably never did the quadratic formula. And they'll go to their seat. I hate math. Why don't they have to put letters in there? And so I got to try to encourage them. Hey, you can do this. This isn't going to be that. Okay, what you got to do is you got to pay attention to the examples. And so I'll try to encourage them. I'll start writing on the board. I'll write the examples. Example one, I'll work it out, work it out. And the students who care, they want to make the grade, they got their paper out. They got their pencil, and they're just following along, writing down all the examples. They may raise their hand and ask a question every now and then, and they're just working along. I'll give them their assignment. Their assignment will be here. Their notes will be here, and they're just looking back at their example, and they're working all along. You kind of see a facial expression like, it's not that bad. And the bell rings. They leave class. I said, Mr. Darnell, that's actually pretty easy. Students. Today, I'm going to tell you, pay attention to the examples. When life seems too hard, pay attention to the examples. No matter the size of the choice, big or small, pay attention to the examples. When you're choosing your spouse, and by the way, Lauren made an agreement with me that when she gets married, I can play the piano. So, hey, when you choose a spouse... Where to live or what church to go to, pay attention to the examples. When life seems too hard and you don't know what direction to go, pay attention to the examples. You said, Marty, time out. Explain this. Pay attention to the examples. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the Word of God. From Genesis to Revelation, it's full of examples. Full of examples for us to read and to learn. Examples that we need to look at and that we need to do, that we need to follow. And there's examples in God's Word that we need to look at, we need to learn from, and we don't need to repeat. So this morning, if you would, open your book, Bibles, to 2 Chronicles chapter 2. Let's look at one of these examples. Verse 1, it says, And Rehoboam went to Shechem. Shechem, it's a place that's been mentioned several times before in the Bible. Shechem was the place where Joshua, towards it's, it's the end of his, his time as the leader of the children of Israel, and he, he brings them all together. And he's, he's speaking to them, and he gives them just a, a history reminder of the things that the people have done and went through. And remember this verse, you all know this, in Joshua chapter 24, verse 14 and 15, it says, Now therefore, fear the Lord, serve Him in sincerity, and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. It seems evil to you to serve for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The rest of the Israelites, they, they joined Joshua and said, we will serve the Lord. So Joshua took this huge stone and he set it up. He set it up as a reminder 
of what was said and done there. Many years later, Rehoboam is coming to Shechem. Rehoboam is the son of Solomon. Solomon is the son of David. He's coming here to Shechem. For all Israel had gone to Shechem to make him king. Verse 2, it says, So it happened when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard it. He was in Egypt where he had fled from the presence of King Solomon. That Jeroboam returned to Egypt. Now you're reading that, and that's it's when those eyes just get a little bigger and interesting, like, Jeroboam, who is that guy? You learn more about Jeroboam in 1 Kings chapter 11. In 1 Kings chapter 11, it talks to us about how Jeroboam is a worker for Solomon. And one day he was leaving Jerusalem. And as he was leaving Jerusalem, a prophet met him. The prophet had on this new cloak. And he takes this new cloak off and he rips it into 12 pieces. And he told Jeroboam to take 10. And he told him, said, Solomon, he ain't living right. And he's serving other gods. And I'm going to take the kingdom away from him, from his son. And I'm going to give you 10. Solomon hears about it. Jeroboam flees to Egypt for safety. Solomon's passed away now. Rehoboam is going to be king. And here Jeroboam's coming back to town. Verse 3, it says, Then they sent for him and called him, and Jeroboam and all Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now therefore lighten the burdensome service of your father and his heavy yoke, which you put on us, and we will serve you. They told him, said, Life is hard. Things, things are not easy. Lighten the taxes. Lighten the load. Verse 5, it says, So he said to them, Come back to me after three days. And the people departed. So we got a decision to make. Rehoboam, the people of Israel came to him and said, Hey, lighten up, brother, lighten up. He said, What should Rehoboam do? You know, as you read verse 4, you think, Man, he should lighten up. Let me tell you, the first thing that Rehoboam should do is he should ask God. He should ask God for direction. If you need to know what direction to go in life, what choice to make, ask God. Look at James chapter 1. James chapter 1 and verse 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. God is the one to go to. He shouldn't be the last resort, but he should be the first. The first one that we go to. We should go to God. We should trust in him. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Many of you know it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. So Rehoboam, he has a decision to make. And let's see what he does. Back to 2 Chronicles chapter 10. Look at verse 6. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who stood before his father Solomon while he still lived, saying, How do you advise me to answer these people? And they spoke to him, saying, If you are kind to these people and please them, and speak good words to them, they will be your servants forever. But he rejected the advice which the elders had given him, and consulted the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. And he said to them, What advice do you give? How should we answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Lighten the yoke which your father put on us? Then the young men who had grown up with him spoke to him, saying, Thus you should speak to the people who have spoken to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you make it lighter on us. Thus you shall say to them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's waist. And now, whereas my father put a heavy yoke on you, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. He said, you got two different counsels. 
You got wise counsel. We got these people that, that served with his father. And they said, hey, listen to them. Be nice. Be kind. And then you got the other group. You got the young group. You got his yes men. You got his, his guys that are just going to say what he wants to hear. And he rejects the wise and goes, he listens to the young men that he'd grown up with. Let me tell you, be careful who you listen to. Sometimes our friends, the people we grow up with, do not make the best counsel. Too often they just tell us what we want to hear instead of what we need to hear. I think of Amnon. Amnon was one of David's sons. He, he loved his half-sister. And Amnon had this friend. It was his cousin. His cousin had noticed that Amnon just wasn't himself, that he looked a little down in the dumps. And he talked to him. He asked what the deal was, and he told him how he loved his sister. And Amnon's friend gave some horrible advice. Amnon followed this advice, and we know, if you read in 2 Samuel chapter 13, it didn't go the way that he hoped. You know, I, as a teacher, I notice bad counsel way too often. Students, they're struggling with certain issues and instead of going to the counselor, instead of going to a trusted teacher, they listen to their friends. They listen to somebody in the hallway. And that's not always bad. There's some good students that can give some good advice. Anthony gives us good advice every Sunday morning in Sunday school. All right, He's very wise. But there's a lot of students in that hallway that they don't do that. They, they listen to the friend and they, they hear what they want. And they just tell them what they want to hear. Christians, listen, please, everybody listen to this. We should not be yes men. We should not tell someone something just because that is what they want to hear. In Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, look there with me. Verse 1, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Graduates, when you're seeking direction, all areas of your life, always go to God. Always go to God and listen, seek wise counsel, not do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. So we see the counsel that Rehoboam listened to. Let's see his choice. Let's see his choice. Verse 12. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day as the king had directed, saying, Come back to me the third day. Then the king answered them roughly. King Rehoboam rejected the advice of the elders. In Proverbs chapter 15, in verse 1, it says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. In verse 14 of our text, it says, And he spoke to them according to the advice of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to it. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. He listened to the wrong counsel, and now he's making a bad choice. He got a bad counsel, we got bad choice. And in Proverbs chapter 13, in verse 20, it says, He who walks with the wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. I can't stress it enough how important it is to surround yourself with good counsel. Look at verse 15. So we, we, we see the counsel, we see the choice. Now let's look at the consequence. Verse 15, it says, So the king did not listen to the people, for the turn of events was from God, 
that the Lord might fulfill his word, which he had spoken by the hand of Ahijah, the Shilonite, to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Now when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people answered the king, saying, What share have we in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to your tents, O Israel. Now see to your own house, O David. They told Rehoboam, we're done. We're done. You're not our leader anymore. So all Israel departed to their tents. But Rehoboam reigned over the children of Israel who dwelt in the cities of Judah. Then King Rehoboam sent Hadoram, who was in charge of revenue. But the children of Israel stoned him with stones, and he died. Therefore King Rehoboam mounted his chariot in haste to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. Have you ever thought, I wish I would have? Have you ever had that thought, I wish I would have? When I was in high school, I went on a fishing trip. Not really a fishing. Well, we went fishing. Okay? We went fishing down in the bottoms to the Arkansas River. And... The way we went is a pretty long way. It took us a while to get there. We fished for a while, and just like most of my fishing trips, uh, it was unproductive. We didn't catch anything. There was a time to leave. And the friend that was with me, he didn't drive. And he never went down in the bottoms hardly where we were at. But he said, Marty, go that way. All right. We came from this direction, and so when we leave, we should have went that direction. But he says, go that way. I said, okay, I guess. But down deep, Dom, I was thinking, no, just go back the long way. Just go back, just go back. But he's like, no, go this way, go this way. Okay. So we start driving, and it gets super muddy really quick. So I stop. I have 86 Ford four-wheel drive. I, I get out of the truck, and I go, and I lock the wheels in four-wheel drive. And it looks like we're driving in the middle of the field. And in my mind, I'm thinking, bad decision, bad decision, bad decision. So we, we get to this point where I can see a paved road, and I'm thinking, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We're like from here to the back of the sanctuary, away from that paved road. But in between us, the stage right there is this, what looks like a creek. I'd been there before. I'd hauled hay down there, and I thought, well, I can. I thought, normally I could drive across there, but that water's pretty high. And I'm thinking about the road that I'd traveled and how muddy and dangerous sliding around I was doing. And I just stopped, and I was trying to think. And what's my friend doing? He's like, go, go, go. I was like, I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do this. I should, I should have went the long way right from the beginning. But he's like, go, go, go. And so dumb, what did I do? Dumb teenager, I went. So I go, and I'm in the middle of this water, and I didn't go anymore. I was stuck. I opened my door, and water starts to come in the floorboard. I'm thinking what all teenage boys think. My mom's going to kill me. <laughs> and, and I thought, I wish I would have. I wish I would have went the long way. And I'm thinking about Rehoboam. If I'm Rehoboam, and reading those last few verses, 15 through 19, I'm thinking, man, I wish I would have. As, as the people of Israel just told you, hey, we're done with you, as Hadoram just got stoned to death and jumping into the, the chariot to flee, thinking, man, I, I wish I would have. Wish I would have. Wish I would have went with a wise counsel instead of the guys my age. I wish I would have made the right choice, but he didn't. He listened to bad counsel. He made a bad choice. And he had to deal with the bad consequence. Look at Psalm 119. 
Psalm 119, verse 9. It says, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes with my lips. I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. God loves you. He gave us the word of God. And like I said earlier, from Genesis to Revelation, it's full of examples. Examples that we need to read and that we need to learn from. I encourage you, read your Bible. Pray. I won't put you through the misery of me singing to you again. But the words of the song says, read your Bible, pray every day. Pray every day, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Read your Bible. Look at the examples that God has given us to follow and pray every day. In closing, you've made many plans. You've made plans on where to go to college, what career path to enter into. You've made plans on what you want to do this summer. What If you want to get a job, if you want to go on a, a little vacation before you get started back in the fall. All of us in here has probably talked to someone about our plans for the week. And the majority of us have discussed with your special someone your plans for lunch. But let me ask you this. What's your plans on eternity? What's your plans on eternity? There's only two choices. Heaven or hell. Jesus said in John chapter 14, He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You know, you can make plans all day, and they all seem important, but the most important plan, the most important thing to plan for is eternity. Have you made that plan? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If not, today is the best day. Now is the best time. In, Cor uh, in Corinthians it says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for all the examples that you've given us. Dear Lord, I pray for these students. I pray that their Bible will not be something that sits on a shelf, but something that they cherish, something that they read each and every day. God, I pray that they, they pray every day, morning, evening, and all in between. God, I pray that if there's anyone here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that they would come to know you before it's too late. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.